In this podcast, we're going to take a look at John's Gospel. John's Gospel is different from the other Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are all called the synoptic Gospels. Synoptic comes from two Greek words that means to see the same thing, uh, meaning that they share a similar viewpoint. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are very similar in what they tell about and the way they tell it and even why they tell it. But John's Gospel is different. It stands alone from the others. The Synoptic Gospels were all written to tell the story of Jesus in such a way that hearers would become believers and eventually become Christ followers. They were designed for evangelistic purposes, largely for people who had not heard the Gospel before. The emphasis of the Synoptic Gospels is on the teachings and the miracles of Jesus in such a way that the people who hear the stories and hear about what Jesus did would come to the conclusion that he is who he said he was and would come to faith in him and become his followers. But John's Gospel had a slightly different purpose in that it was written considerably later than the other Gospels when John found it necessary to encourage believers who were falling away and encourage them to continue to be faithful and not grow discouraged or to be deceived by false teachings. Um, John's Gospel takes into account that there were already a number of Christian believers and that some of them were beginning to twist and distort the teachings of Jesus and needed to be set straight. Part of what was going on in John's day was a rise in a heresy known as Gnosticism. Gnosticism was an interesting blend of Greek pagan philosophy and Roman pagan religion and Christianity. And um, it uh, was very attractive to many people who found its ideas very compelling. Uh, One of the most significant features of Gnosticism was something called dualism, the idea that the world is divided into two parts, that which is matter and that which is spirit. Matter is bad and spirit is good. So much so that Gnostics actually postulated that the material universe was created by a bad god and the spiritual universe was created by a good god. Out of this idea came a deep suspicion that maybe Jesus didn't have a real body at all because that would mean that he had a material body, you know, flesh and blood, and that he sweat and smelled, and that he had to go poop and all that kind of stuff. And people had a hard time believing that Jesus was real in that very earthy, physical sense. So they began to circulate the idea that Jesus might not have had an actual human body. He might have only had the appearance of a human body. Maybe he was sort of like a ghost. And... um, and, and, or maybe he was sort of like uh, a spirit that took possession of a man and used him and then abandoned him at the cross. Um, that idea was very troubling to Christians like John because it was absolutely essential in their understanding that Jesus was a literal, real human being, just like you and me, only he was God in human form. Another feature of Gnosticism was that salvation came by a secret knowledge, the Gnosis, and um, that only a select few were in on the secret knowledge and the vast, hum- the vast majority of humanity were going to miss out on it. That salvation was not a function of God's love, God's grace, Christ's redemption, Christ's death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection, but salvation was a function of understanding the secret knowledge and being smart enough to perceive it and to believe it and then to be able to pass it on to other people. So it was a, a, a really different way of salvation, but it was closely enough related to the Christian message that a lot of people found it attractive. Another thing that was going on in John's day, you know, late in the first century, is that Uh, Christians were dying. There were many Christians who thought that Jesus would return soon. They never thought they'd have time to get old and die. And now that's exactly what was happening. And the question came up, why the delay? What's taking Jesus so long? Um, Why hasn't he come back yet? 
And so John explores some of these issues in his gospel. Uh, Notable are places like John 14, where Jesus says to his apostles, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Or John 15, where Jesus urges his disciples to stay connected to him, abide in me, and you'll bear much fruit. Um, Don't become discouraged. Don't disconnect. Don't go your own way. Don't do your own thing. Um, that would be that would be a fatal mistake. But hang in there, basically, is the idea. Hang in there. Don't get discouraged. Um, be in there for the long haul. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And uh, don't be discouraged because uh, it isn't happening on your timetable. Just hang in there. Keep your faith, and you'll come out okay. And that's um, pretty much the message that John was trying to get across in his gospel.